Hi, my name is Scott McPherson, and I'm a beekeeper who's starting over from scratch. I wanted to take advantage of starting over to show you what you need to get started, as well as to journal how I keep bees and grow bees successfully. I have been keeping bees treatment-free since 1985. Today, that's what we're gonna talk about and why I'm starting over. But we'll get to that in just a minute. Hi, I'm Scott McPherson, and this is Beekeeping From Scratch, where it's about the bees. Hey beekeepers, it is my great pleasure to welcome you and introduce you to this channel, Beekeeping From Scratch. If you're already a beekeeper, just getting started, or thinking about being, bringing bees in your lives, leave a comment below and let us know. The first thing I want to talk about is really why I want to do, you know, why I want to do the beekeeping videos and then why is this a good time for us to do this together so there's two kinds of beekeepers that are out there on YouTube they're the experienced beekeepers that have been keeping bees for a long time and their videos talk about they talk about their methods and how they do things and when they kind of talk about beginning beekeeping or how to get started a lot of those beekeepers are treating beginning beekeeping as if still as if they still had a lot of bees right and as beginning beekeepers really don't other kind of beekeeping video you see out there are the beginners who are journaling you know their journey and those are great but uh, you know and we're all learning from you know their mistakes together and that's a fantastic thing but you know I noticed that there's kind of a gap and the thing is I find that there is a gap between those two all right and the gap between those two kinds of beekeeping videos and I find that there's kind of a gap between those two the gap is kind of that crossover where the experienced beekeeper he's talking about beekeeping from his experience perspective but he's not really going through the process with you right He's talking about the process that he started with, or he's talking about the process that he would start if he were doing it again, but he's not really doing it, okay? And the other perspective is the beekeeper who's talking about things that he doesn't quite yet know about, right? So there's that gap in between. So I kind of want to fill that gap here by being that experienced beekeeper who is starting from scratch, right? So now you might ask, why am I starting over? If I'm an experienced beekeeper and I know how to keep bees and I can keep bees treatment free and I've been doing it for 35 years, why don't I have any bees? Well, listen, that's a really good question. All right, and the long and short answer is, I got divorced, I moved across country, and I had to start over with every aspect of, of my life. And now I'm in a good place where I can actually get started into this and do it again and build up my operation from the ground up and we, that's you and I, we get to do it together. So I started beekeeping in 1985 when I was given a beehive for Christmas by my Aunt Jeannie and Uncle Bob. And for the first few years, I had one beehive and they lasted for years and I didn't really run into any of the challenges that beekeepers are having and not really doing a whole lot to them because, well, they just really didn't need it. They didn't need the help. I knew that there were pests because, you know, I was reading the beekeeping magazines and the medicines were all for sale. Uh, but, you know, again, you know, I was a teenage kid. I didn't have any money. So I kind of started out as a treatment free beekeeper really by accident, not by choice. After a few years, I started to grow the number of beehives I had, and before I joined the Navy, I had about five beehives, and they did just fine. Okay, so fast forward a few years, and I moved to Florida when I left the Navy. I decided I'd try these top bar hives, and I designed and built my own hives, and put bees in them, and I kept bees successfully in Sarasota, Florida for about seven years. And I think a lot of people are using my design. In 2006, we decided it was time to get out of Florida. The summers just excruciatingly hot. I mean, you can't believe how hot it is. You open up the door and it's just like walking right into a furnace. You can't walk 15 feet before the back, before your back is dripping wet hot. So we decided to get out of Florida. We decided for demographic reasons that we were gonna to move to uh, the Davenport Quad City area of, of Iowa. And while in Iowa, I decided now is the time for me to go commercial. I bought all the lumber that I needed to build 500 beehives, top bar beehives. Now let me tell you, that ended up not being the greatest idea in the world, but that's what I did. So I built 500 beehives over the winter of 2006, and my kids helped. In fact, there they are, with the lumber in the back of the truck, helping me unload the lumber, bringing the lumber down into the basement, and helped me build 500 beehives.
through three wardrobe changes and a haircut, as you can see, uh, since I got this video started. So let's try and knock the rest of this out if we can. So after a season of having 500 top bar hives, uh, which as I told you, I thought really wasn't the best idea once I had tried it. Beekeeper needs to be in there and managing the bees rather actively, or things kind of get less and less manageable over time. And I stumbled upon what's called the people's hive or the ware hive. So the ware hive is basically a 12 by 12 by 8 inch box that's interior dimensions and I'm, those are approximations because the top bars are placed in but they're uh, boxes that you could stack vertically and they're very much like a Langstroth hive but they don't have frames. They just have top bars. And uh, you could see in some of these pictures um, that I have up on the wall and I'll post them up in the video that some of them included shortening up some of those top bar hives and sticking them on top of the warre hives and letting them, letting the bees kind of grow downward in the warre style or in the people's hive style. Um, so over the next two seasons, I converted all of my beehives to warre hives and I had, uh, including some additional number, about 500, well, yeah, 500 beehives again, but in the warre style. And, I did that pretty much from 2007 until uh, 2012, which is, as I told you, that's uh, when I got divorced and moved across the country. And actually, I think 2013 is when I uh, moved across the country. When I got divorced, moved across the country, sold all my bees, sold all my equipment, sold everything. I didn't even—I don't even have a table saw, or didn't have—you know—I I didn't have anything. It's all gone. So now here I am, and it's time for me to get back into bees. To be honest with you, you know, as I shared before. I really do think this is the perfect opportunity to start, you know, documenting what I'm doing. You know, I've been a beekeeper for, you know, quite a long time. I am starting over and I'm starting over from scratch. Um, and it's a great time to offer, you know, a great opportunity to document this. Um, I am going to be using Langstroth equipment this time, uh, which I have used in the past. My first six beehives were Langstroth equipment. I'm very familiar with how to use it, but that's what I'm doing now because, you know, when you get into hive choices and stuff, you realize that if you're using something different than what the rest of the industry is doing, it can make things a little difficult for you. And really what I wanted to do is produce bees, not necessarily honey. So because I want to produce bees, I really need to be in standard equipment that everybody else is using so that when I sell frames of my bees, they fit into other people's equipment or if I need bees from somebody else. God forbid, their equipment fits in mine. I don't have to figure out a way to finagle it into my hive or shake bees down or anything like that. So that's the plan. And All right, guys. Thank you very much for making it through the entire video. If you have any questions about me, please leave a comment below and ask me. I'll get to them as fast as I can. At any rate, that's it. Thank you, guys. And I'll see you next time. Hi, my name is Scott McPherson. And I'm a beekeeper. Hi, welcome to my channel, Beekeeping from Scratch, where we'll show you what's needed to become and to grow as a beekeeper when you're starting from no God damn it. Leave a comment if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> How long it takes before your significant other stops threatening to cut off your allowance. Yeah. Uh, leave a comment if you know what I'm talking about, right?